What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I'm gonna do a video today I've kind of been wanting to do for a little while. I don't know how well it's gonna go, but if you guys have been paying attention to new thermal technologies, you guys might've noticed that there is a new thermal pad that has come out designed for CPUs to replace the messy thermal paste that we are all accustomed to. Now, as you guys know, there are all kinds of different thermal pastes on the market, including liquid metal, which is technically not a paste at all, uh, but there's different like Arctic Silvers, there's Thermal Grizzly, all kinds of stuff. And the debate continues forever and endlessly about which one is best. Well, today I'm not gonna use the actual thermal pad that people are using. I can't remember the name of it, to be honest, but it got me thinking, why can't I use a thermal pad that I get with the GPU blocks? I mean, we use it on RAM and stuff like that, but is this actually gonna conduct enough thermal transfer to keep us from overheating our stuff? Or will it actually insulate in some way and not transfer heat well enough and is it gonna overheat our CPUs? Which will make me wonder whether or not this is actually working at all. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna check it out with our test bench and see whether or not this homebrew method actually works. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN and it is more important than ever to start protecting your online experience. With constant database breaches and the ongoing constant discussion regarding net neutrality, protecting yourself is more important than ever. And NordVPN has over 4,300 servers available in 62 countries in pretty much every region around the world, including Africa, the Middle East, Asia, the United States, I mean, you get it. But the best part about NordVPN is they don't keep logs, which means you are experiencing a truly 100% anonymous online experience. So start taking your online security serious by heading to nordvpn.com slash jace 2 cents and save 77% on a three-year membership by using offer code jace 2 cents at checkout. So now we can... Ah! So we're gonna be doing a couple of different methods today. Of course, we need our control. This is my test bench, 8700K, sitting on a Z370. Now we are actually running the EK Echotherm that comes with the GPU blocks. I've been using it on CPUs for a while. And we actually had our test running here, media data sets inside of OCCT now for 17 minutes to make sure our loop can actually equalize. Now in terms of the cooling capacity of the loop itself, that's not gonna be as important as a whole to this particular experiment. We wanna see how it compares to our control, which is a 360 rad with an 8700K that has got an all core overclock of 4.7. Yeah, I know it's a turbo clock, but remember usually on one or two cores will ramp to 4.7. We've got all six cores ramping to 4.7 and we are pumping 1.42 volts to it. That's a lot of volt for this CPU. So this test has been running now for 18 minutes. It looks like our averages are sitting in the mid to upper 60s, going into the 70s momentarily, with our peaks actually reaching 90s and low 90s, high 80s. But remember, these are outliers. These are these big peaks that you see, like this one right here. This is not indicative of your everyday use. The, stand, the regular temperature you're seeing here as it fluctuates, this is our temperature that matters. This is stressing our system as it's designed to, to just punch the CPU hard, you're never gonna see these types of temperatures under regular day-to-day -day use, even rendering videos, especially playing games and stuff like that. We are going to cut a piece of this. This is a 0.5 millimeter. This is a half millimeter thermal pad that comes with the EK water blocks for GPUs. And this is what we're gonna actually tr use. We're gonna, we're gonna cut a piece that covers the bulk of the IHS or the an internal heat spreader. And then we are going to test it after all is said and done with no thermal pad and no thermal paste just so you guys can kind of see what happens when there's no transfer material whatsoever. So I'm using paper towels. Normally like coffee filters work pretty good, but these paper towels I'm using are actually pretty good about not leaving a lot of lint behind. As you can see, I have not delitted my 8700K. I probably will do that at some point just to fix terrible Intel shortcomings with thermal paste. So as you can see, it's a pretty good cover. It doesn't cover the very, very edges, but remember the die on this chip is right in the middle right here. This is a spreader. So you don't have to actually cover every square millimeter of this, but you do want to get obviously the bulk of it. So I'm just going to sort of mark where the edge of it is. You can see it made a little indentation. I'm going to cut and then we are going to apply. Now you want to make sure you clean it with alcohol and stuff, the CPU, that way this actually sticks to it. Otherwise it won't stick very well, but because I just cleaned it with alcohol, this should stick nicely. Oh yeah, it's definitely sticking, especially because it's warm too. That wasn't centered though. Let's get that centered. I'm really bad at arts and crafts, as you can tell. So all the thermal paste does is fill all those microscopic cracks and crevices that are on the surfaces of these materials. 
They look and feel flat to our scale, but once you get down to the microscopic levels, they look like the Grand Canyon. They are not perfectly flat. So that's all thermal paste is designed to do. The thermal pad, whether or not it can do the same thing and, not, and, and transfer that heat quick enough, that's what we're gonna be checking here. So we're gonna start by checking our initial temps in BIOS before we even go to the desktop. And we're sitting at 35C at idle. I don't recall what it was before. Doesn't seem terrible though. All right, we're gonna start the test and we'll know right away if we get like an initial, like just big ass spike of some sort. So our temperatures are right here. It's currently sitting at 44, 45. This is, this is warmer at idle, I'm almost positive. All right, we're gonna start it, are you ready? Oh, ding, right to thermal throttling. <laughs> Did you hear the fans go to like 100%? Yeah, the fans like got scared. So we went 188, 84, 100, 194, 87. Try it again. Hundred. Wow. Well, some of the cores are below 100. Well. That was short. Okay, so now we need to actually make this video worth something. Um, we should go to the kitchen and see what we have that we could use as a thermal paste. Oh God. Let's go. <laughs> and try a piece of, piece, no, that's not a piece of cheese. We try ranch dressing. And then Nick's like melted popsicle. Ew. <laughs> Toothpaste it is. It kind of makes you wonder then how well these pads thermally conduct at all then. Cause we use them on VRMs. We use them on memory chips. We use them on all kinds of things. But if it can't transfer the heat fast enough and like, for instance, VRMs get really, really hot. So I guess the question then begs to differ, does it, does it really work at all? So if you know the answer to where, where thermal pads make sense and why they make sense, can you please put it in the comments below? Cause I'll be honest, I have no idea now. This is obviously a lot easier to work with, right? But I promised we would try it with nothing. So we gotta do that. And I think we'll see pretty much the same result. Um, it'll just go until it thermal throttles. So I'd like to point out that we are actually idling less with nothing, no thermal paste and no pad. Here's the pad we used right here. Uh, we're actually idling about what? Almost 10 C less than when we had the thermal pad on there and we have no paste or anything. Now, as soon as I hit start on this test, it's just gonna woof right to, it's gonna woof. It's gonna bark. So it's not stupid. We're gonna, it's gonna go right to like a hundred watch. Or it's gonna sit in the damn 60s. What the frig? Oh, there's the 80s. Fans kicking up, there's the 90s. How is this doing better than the pad? Because the pad was insulating. This is actually allowing some sort of transfer of heat because the, the, the surfaces are touching, but remember they're, they're still not touching perfectly flat on that microscopic level. Whereas this, was actually creating an insulated layer between the heat spreader and the block. So again, I go back to my original question, how does this help when you put it on things like VRMs and RAM modules? I mean, it goes all the way back to that EK or the, the uh, EVGA issue where they didn't put thermal pads on the VRM on part of the, the original 1080 for the Win 2. Um, but we did see an improvement on temperatures on the VRMs once these were applied. So obviously they work but I believe in a very specific circumstance. Are we even throttling right now? Let me see. We're not even throttling. We did hit 100C on a couple of them, but look, we're still sitting upper 90s. And TJ Maxx on this is 105. So until one of these hit 105, it won't throttle. So no thermal paste is actually working better than heat pad or thermal pad, whatever. Insulating pad, what we'll call it now. Now I know we've done this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it now just to show how toothpaste versus thermal pad to see which does better. Uh, I already know kind of what the result's gonna be. Like I said, we've done toothpaste back when we did our video about crazy household items being used as thermal paste. Um, the peanut butter did the worst. No, actually the Oreo cookie filling did the worst that day. Okay, I'm gonna apply this with my fingers. I don't know if that's gonna actually spread out as good. I think this is the part where people start to say, Jay's done run out of ideas. You know, idle hands are the devil's playthings. I'd rather put my hand on my computer than my... So I forgot that this one has like those whitening crystals. So you can actually hear when I push it down, listen. 
Oh, it's like crunchy. Our toothpaste has been installed. Whoa, we're idling much warmer. This is not gonna work. Okay, we're ready to push start. It's gonna go straight to thermal throttle, watch. Oh, 70s. <laughs> 80s, 90s, oh. Red light's coming on for CPU right there. <laughs> it's telling me that it's hot. <laughs> the thing is it's hitting 100 and coming back down to the 90s, whereas the thermal pad would hit 100 and kind of stay there. So is Crest white, 3D white toothpaste better than thermal pads? No, because like we're at 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 98, 100. So here's the bottom line. I need to do this video again, but I need to actually order the thermal pads that were designed for CPUs. I tried, but they're out of stock because I think Linus did a video about it and a few other people did. And then of course everyone bought them up. So I will check it out because if it turns out to be good and worth it, I will try it on the CPU. I'll try it on GPUs especially. Remember GPUs have more focused heat than a CPU. And I would love an alternative to dealing with nasty thermal paste. I hate thermal paste, it gets everywhere. So yeah, we're gonna go guys. This is, this is definitely one of those videos. It was just like, at the end of the day, I'm like, this was really one of those ideas that I should have flushed down the toilet and not taken out of the bathroom with me. Not like the leaf blower, that was a good one. You guys, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, then you definitely wanna go and check that one out. All right, guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. If you've got any crazy ideas that you think we should try, make sure you let me know. Obviously, we'll try it. We're, we're desperate at this point because we're bored. We're bored. It's summertime. It's, it's about to be summertime. We need things to do. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. It smells nice, though, right? I mean, it smells very minty fresh. <laughs> that was really concentrated. <laughs>